My next guest will tell her story about being nameless, a story she's never told anywhere else before. And she'll also share with us about walking the catwalk in New York City for Fashion Week at age 74. Stick with me. Here we are with one of the most incredible women I have ever had the pleasure and the honor to meet. She has a really, really compelling story to tell you. Her name is Faraha Moye. And before Faraha says anything, I want to say a little bit about her and read some from her bio. Now, this is as if Faraha were speaking. I'm going to read it exactly how she sent it to me. What's a Faraha? At 75, it's rather difficult to put it all in a few short sentences. Clearly, it's been a long and often arduous ride, I hear that, and yet most fulfilling at the same time, and that's what we want to hear. One of the most important things I can share is all about the core of my being. This is Faraha talking. That core is ever-evolving, understanding, and overstanding of the power of love. By embracing love, patience, and understanding, I've been gifted generously to pursue my life as an artist in several genres, having evolved over the last 75 years. There's really been some ugly ups and downs, yet the ups have evolved into the woman I am today. And that's why we're here having this conversation. Sorry, I had to put that little bit in. <laughs> she goes on to say, it's all about the stories. And believe me, I've got stories. We all do. Again, that's why we're here. And I have to add, at age 74, 74, she walked the catwalk for Fashion Week in New York City. And I think she's going to do it again. So let's talk about accomplishments, motivation, and determination. This is my friend, Faraha Moye. Hi. Hi. How Thank are you? For you? Such a wonderful introduction. I'm fabulous. How are you? I'm great. I, well, how can I not be great? I mean, we were lucky enough to actually meet on person, in person, because so many people meet online, different groups, different organizations, and I was lucky to be in New York City and spend time with you. So that was, it helped me too because now that I've been with you, I really um, fully understand more. Uh, who you are and who you are is fabulous. I could say that right now, but we're going to jump go to that. I would say that <laughs> it takes fabulous to know fabulous. Oh and my gosh. At the end of the day, it is all about energy because you know when it's good and you know when it's not, and you know how to act accordingly. Yeah. You know, I couldn't, I could not agree more. Absolutely. Amen. That's, that's uh, how I conduct my life too, is about Amen. the energy, you know, it's all about the energy. I mean, even if you just place your hands facing each other and Making focus on the breath, you can feel that energy passing back and forth between your hands. Yes, so absolutely. Well, being a Qigong instructor and that's all that's called that's Qi, fine. Qi, energy you know you make an energy ball with your hands you know if you've taken uh tai chi kung fu a lot of other the of other martial arts or moving meditation like that you feel that chi that energy That's but right. and it's not about fighting it's about energy positive energy yes, yes. and in yeah. many martial arts it's it's not um, fighting against, it's you're trying to avoid the contact and you're blocking a lot of the time until you have to maybe yes. make a punch. But <laughs> on to something much more, ex I mean, that is exciting and interesting, but your yeah. story, this first part of our conversation is a story that you told me, but you said you've never told anyone before. And that I'm so honored that you want to share that here. So Please, the floor is yours. Okay, you know, it's 
life I've come to understand is all about understanding that we are what we think and how that trajectory starts the moment we come out of the womb. The messages you receive coming out of the womb become very critical. And if you're fortunate, you get to a level where you understand that there's some uh, subconscious work that you need to do because there's blocks that are in your way. And it took me until I was in my mid thirties to understand that there was this major block. And it was only about that time that I began to understand that I had work to do to unlock it. But what kicked in though, was remembering as a young girl that I didn't like my name and I was always adjusting it on my papers at school and the nuns would scratch it out in red and write it like it was supposed to be the way my mother named me. Now, what's interesting, and I, I'm, <laughs> this is another one of those things that I don't share publicly and anybody who tries to use, it's gonna have an issue, however, my mother named me Joanne. And as I said, I knew that that just wasn't working for me. I didn't know what was, but I knew that wasn't it. But long story short, I left home at 18, moved to Washington, D.C. And one night I went to a party. Very lively group of people. It was a wonderful party. And there was a clown there. And her name was Faraha. And I was like, oh, wow, that's really something. And I decided then that that was the name I wanted. Didn't know what it meant at the time. And this guy asked me, what's your name? And I turned to my roommate. And I said, how do you say that again? And of course, he said, never mind, whatever. And he walked away. Anyway, so I found out later that Faraha meant happy. Oh. in Arabic and in Swahili. And I was like, definitely that's my name. And I then began the process of making it legal, but I began hitting a wall. Now, we understand how vital names are. So not only was this about a name, this was about a connection, my history, my view of myself, all balled into one with a name. And I kept trying to locate my birth certificate and couldn't find it. Now, I have to interject here that I had some growing to do to understand that I could not hold my mother harmful for the choice that she made. Bottom line is I had to leave Atlanta one weekend to go home for a two day visit, basically, to ask my mother, where is my birth certificate? Because I couldn't find it at the, um, I was gonna say the DMV, but those are cars. Uh, <laughs> Bureau of Vital Statistics, that's what it right. is. And I'm like, they're probably tired of me calling them asking about this birth certificate, but I'm like, okay, I know I was born in Manhattan. I know my name is Joanne and my mother said Moy. And I'm like, no, 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 we're not Chinese. Anyway, so my mom goes in the bedroom and she comes back and she has this piece of paper folded up like so. And she very, very gently and delicately opens it. And the thing's been folded and in the drawer for so long that it's that um, legal paper yellow almost. And there's this little teeny weeny hole in the center. But what's key here is that on the birth certificate, the reason that I could not find it is because it said baby, Hicks. And I'm like, who does that to their kid? <laughs> you know? And she, she was very sheepish when she came out of the bedroom. And I was like, oh boy, this is going to be heavy. 
And it was at that point that she said, so um, we have to make it legal and I'll pay for it. And I thought, no, all right, you'll pay for it. This was your idea, not mine. And that's when I had to tell her that my first name was Faraha. And she looked at me and I was like thinking to myself, because I'm still not going to push up against my mother, but so much, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, I just looked at her and I said, you know, to myself, you cannot be having an issue with me choosing Faraha when now for 33 years I'm Baby Hicks and I don't know that until this moment. So uh, she paid for the name change and I was not going to use a last name. And that's when I decided to do the work to find out what Moye meant, Mm. which was also very revealing because it means soft stone. And as gregarious and generous and loving as I can be, when I get in a twist, it ain't pretty. (laughs) So um, I, uh, I accepted and became Faraha Moye. But uh, for my mother's benefit, I made Joanne my middle name, Aww. which of course I do not use. <laughs> but if it made her happy, I was like, okay, this is a good thing. You know, so I need to be about the business of healing because there's a father piece that goes with that too. But that's a whole different conversation that's the next time you come back (laughs) there we go (laughs) so oh um, wow that's like an interesting concession that you made for your mother to keep joanne even though it it had not been legal up until this point so i mean that is that is compassionate well is it but the other thing though is that We sometimes have to understand that it is not all about us. Now, yes, that was a moment for me, but there was a moment for her too, because the fact is that I was born out of wedlock. So in 1949, that's not a good thing. You know, people are "Mm, that's kind of skanky. (laughs) They're just cruel. There. Yeah, exactly. But that was not widely accepted. And my mother was of that era that she was very private, very proud. And she just wouldn't want anybody to know that she had sex with somebody that she wasn't married to. Mm. 